live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, CUBE's live coverage for VMworld 2019 in Moscone North in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Dave, our 10 years, we have Eric Herzog, the CMO and Vice President of Global Storage Channels at IBM. Uh, CUBE alum has been on, this is his 11th appearance on the CUBE Whoa. at VMworld. That's the number it's one position. VMworld. Congratulations. Welcome back. Well, thank you very much. Always love to come to theCUBE. Sporting the nice shirt and the IBM badge, well done. Thank you, thank What's you. What's going on with IBM and VMworld? First get the news out, what's happening for you guys here? So for us, uh, we just had a big launch actually in July. That was all about uh, big data, storage for big data and AI and also storage for cyber resiliency. So we just had a big launch in July, so just sort of continuing that momentum. We have some exciting things coming out on September 12th. Um, in the high end of our storage product line. And then some additional things very heavily around containers at the end of October. So the open shift is the first question I have that pops in my head. You know, I think of IBM, I think of IBM storage, I think of Red Hat acquisition. OpenShift's been very successful. Pat Gelsk was talking containers, Kubernetes. Right. OpenShift has been a big part of Red Hat's offering, now part of IBM. Has that Redshift, I mean OpenShift come in to your world and how do you guys view that? I mean, containers obviously, is there any impact there at all? So from, from a storage perspective, no. IBM Storage has been working with Red Hat for over 15 years, way before the company ever thought about buying them. So we went to the old Red Hat summits, it was two guys, a dog and a note, <laughs> and IBM was there. Uh, so we've been supporting Red Hat for years and years and years. So for the storage division, it's probably one of the least changes to the direction compared to the rest of IBM, because we were already doing so yeah, much with Red Hat. President creation at the whole yeah, Red I mean, Hat we were, and We seen this some, as I was kind of teeing up the question, but legitimately though, now that you have that relationship under right. your belt, and IBM's integrating OpenShift into open, and all the services, you're starting to see Red Hat being an integral part across IBM. Right. Does that impact you guys at all? So we've already talked about our support for Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, we do support it. We also support any sort of container environment. So we've made sure that you know, if it's not OpenShift and someone's going to leverage something else that our storage will work with it. We've had support for containers now for two and a half years. We also support the CSI standard. We um, publicly announced that um, earlier in the year that we'd be having products at the end of the year and into next year around the CSI specification. So we're working on that as well. And then IBM also came out with a thing that are called cloud packs. These cloud packs are built around Red Hat. These are add-ons that across multiple divisions. And from that perspective, we're positioned as you know, really that ideal rock solid foundation underneath any of those cloud packs with our support for Red Hat, and the container world. How about protecting containers? I mean, you guys obviously have a lot of uh, history in data protection. Uh, containers are more complicated, there's lots of them. You spin them up, spin them down. If they don't spin them down, they're, they're an attack point. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, first thing I'd say is stay tuned for the 22nd of October, because we will be doing a big announcement around what we're doing for modern data protection in the container space. We've already publicly stated we would be doing stuff, right? We already said we'd be having stuff um, either the end of this year in Q4 or in Q1. So we'll be doing actually our formal launch on the 22nd of October um, from Prague. And we'll be talking much more detail about what we're doing for modern data protection in the container space. Now, wh why Prague? What's, uh, what's your thinking? Oh, IBM has a big event called TechU, it's a technical university, and there'll be about 2,000 people there. So we'll be doing our launch as part of the TechU process. So Ed Walsh, who you both know well, and myself, will be doing a joint keynote um, at that event on the 22nd. So talk a little bit more about multi-cloud. You hear all kinds of stuff on multi-cloud here, and we've been talking on theCUBE for a while. It's like you got IBM Red Hat, you got Google, Cisco's throwing a hat in the ring, obviously VMware has designs on it. You guys are an arms dealer, but of course you're at the same time IBM. IBM just bought Red Hat. So what are your thoughts on multi-cloud? First, how real is it? Mm -hmm. Is it a you know, sizable opportunity? Um, and from a storage perspective, storage divisions perspective, what's your strategy there? Well, from our strategy, we've already been talking hybrid multi-cloud for several years. In fact, we came to Wikibon, your sister entity, and actually Ed and I did a presentation to you in July of 2017. Yep. I looked it up, the title says hybrid multi-cloud. <laughs> storage for hybrid multi-cloud. So before IBM started talking about it, yep. um, 
as a company, which now is of course our official line hybrid multi-cloud, the IBM storage division was supporting that. So we've been supporting all sorts of cloud now for several years, what we have called transparent cloud tiering, where we basically just see cloud as a tier. Just the way Flash would see hard drive or tape as a tier, we now see cloud as a tier. And our Spectrum Virtualized for Cloud sits in a VM either in Amazon or in IBM Cloud, and then several of our software products, the Spectrum line, Spectrum Protect, Spectrum Scale, are available on the AWS marketplace as well as the IBM Cloud marketplace. So for us, we see multi-cloud from a software perspective, where the cloud providers offer it on their marketplaces, our solutions, and we have several, got some stuff with Google as well. So we don't really care what cloud, and it's all about choice, and customers are going to make that choice. Uh, there's been surveys done, you know, you guys have talked about it, that certainly in the enterprise space, you're not going to use one cloud, you use multiple clouds. Three, four, five, seven. So we're not going to care what cloud you use, whether it be the big four, right, Google, IBM, Amazon, or Azure. Could it be NTT in Japan? We have over 400 small and medium cloud providers that use our Spectrum Protect as the engine for their backup as a service. We love all 400 of them. By the way, there's another 400 we'd like to, to start selling Spectrum Protect as a service. So, from our perspective, we will work with any cloud support provider, big, medium, and small, and believe that that's where the end users are going, is to use not just one cloud provider, but several. Yeah, so we want to be the storage connected. That's a good bet, and again, you bring up a good point, which I'll just highlight for everyone watching. You guys have made really good bets early, kind of like we were just talking to Pat Gelsinger, he was making some great bets. You guys have made some, the right calls on a lot of things. Sometimes, you know, Dave's critical of things in there that I don't really have visibility in the storage analyst he is. But generally speaking, you, Red Hat, software, the systems group made it software. How would you describe the benefits of those bets paying off today for customers? You mentioned versatility, all these different partners. Why is IBM relevant now, and from those bets that you've made, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's the benefit to the customers? How, how would you talk about that? Because it's kind of a big message, you got a lot going on at IBM right. Storage, but you've made some good bets that turned out to be on the right side of tech history. What are those bets and what are they materializing sure. into? Well, the key thing is, you know, I always wear a Hawaiian shirt on the cube. Yep. I think once maybe I haven't. You were forced to wear IBM a white shirt. shirt. Yes. You were forced to wear and the white. IBM white shirt. And once I actually had a shirt from when I used to work for Pat at the EMC. But in general, Hawaiian shirt. And why? Because you don't fight the wave, you ride the wave. And we've been riding the wave of technology. First, it was all about AI and automation inside of storage. Our easy tier product automatically tiers. You don't have, to, all you do is set up once and after that automatically moves data back and forth, not only to our arrays, but over 450 arrays that aren't ours. When the data is hot, it goes to the fastest tier. If you have 15,000 RPM drives, that's your fast, it automatically knows that and moves data back and forth between hot, fast, and cold. So one was putting AI and automation in storage. Second way we've been following was clearly flash. It's all about flash. We create our own flash, we buy raw flash, create our own modules, they are in the industry standard form factor, but we do things, for example, like embed encryption with no performance hit into the flash. Latency as low as 20 microseconds. Things that we can do because we take the flash and customize it, although it is an industry standard form factor. The other one is clearly storage software and software defined storage. All of our arrays come with software. We don't sell hardware, we sell a storage solution. They either come with Spectrum Virtualize or Spectrum Scale, but those packages are also available standalone. If you want to go to your reseller or your distributor and buy off-the-shelf white box componentry, storage-rich servers, you can create your own array with Spectrum Virtualize for block, Spectrum Scale for file, IBM Cloud Object Storage for cloud. So if someone wants to buy software only, just the way Pat was talking about software-defined networking, We'll sell them software for file, block, or object, and they don't buy any infrastructure from us, they only buy the software. So, so is that why you right have a large customer base? Is that why there's such a diverse set of implementations? Well, we've partners? got customers that are system oriented, right? Sell me a flash system. Got other customers that say, look, I just want to buy Spectrum Scale, I don't want to buy your infrastructure, just all work, build my own, and we're fine with that. And the other aspect we have, of course, is we've got the modern data protection with Spectrum Protect. So you've got a lot of vendors out on the floor of the show, they only sell backup. That's all they sell. And you got other people on the floor, they only sell an array. They have nice little arrays, but they can't do an array and software-defined storage and modern data protection, one throat to choke, one tech support, 
entity to deal with, one set of business partners to deal with, and we can do that, which is why the, it's so diverse. We have people who don't have any of IBM storage at all, but they back up everything with Spectrum Protect. We have other customers who have flash systems, but they use backup from one of our competitors, and that's okay, because we'll always get a PO one way or another. Right. Yeah, so you want the choices but factor. Question right. on the ecosystem and your relationship with VMware. As John said, 10th year at VMworld. If you go back 10 years, uh, the storage, VMware storage was you know, limited, they had very few resources, they were throwing out APIs to the storage industry and saying, here, you guys fix this problem. Um, and you had this cartel, you know, it was EMC, IBM was certainly in there, NetApp, a couple others, HPE, HP at the time. Dell, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if Dell was there, I mean, they probably were, but you had the big co's that actually got the, you know, the SDK early, right. uh, and then you'd go off and you know, try to solve the storage problems. Of course, the EMC at the time was sort of putting the brakes on, on VMware. Now it's totally different. Um, you, you've got actually similar cartel, although you've got different ownership structure with Dell EMC, um, and you've got vSAN, uh, VMware's doing its own software, finally the, the cuffs are off. So, your thoughts on the changes that have gone on in the ecosystem, IBM's sort of position and your relationship with VMware, how that's evolved. So the relationship for us is very tight. Whether it be the old days of VASA, VAAI, vCenter Ops Support, right, then VVOL1, now, VVOL, One, now yeah, VVOL2. Yeah. So we've been there every single time, and again, we don't fight the wave, we ride the wave. Virtualization is a wave, it swept the industry, it swept the end users, it swept every aspect of compute. We just were riding that wave and making sure our storage always worked with it, with VMware, as well as other hypervisors as well. But we always supported VMware first. VMware also has a strong relationship with the cloud division, as you know, they announced all kinds of different things with IBM Cloud. So we're making sure that we stay there with them and are always up front and center. We are riding all the waves that they start. We're not fighting it, we ride it. You got the Hawaiian shirt, you're riding the waves, you're hanging 10, as he used to Don't say. Don't be driftwood. No, toes on the nose, <laughs> as this expression goes, as Patrick Gelsinger <laughs> says, ride the new wave, you're driftwood. <laughs> Eric, great to see you, CMO of IBM Storage. Great to have you all these years and interviewing you and getting the knowledge. You're a walking storage encyclopedia, <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Great, thank you. Good all to right, see you. more CUBE coverage Thanks, here nice. live in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us, we've got Sanjay Poonin coming up, and we have all the big executives who run the different divisions. We're going to dig into them, we're going to get the data, share it with you. We'll be right back. <laughs>